Hi, my name is Sheldon Livesey. I'm the ministry director for of One Accord Ministry that serves two poverty-stricken areas in Northeast Tennessee. One is Hawkins and one is Hancock. Hancock County is the lowest income county in Tennessee. It's lower income, higher poverty, higher unemployment than Harlan County, Kentucky. That I always was taught was the focal point of all poverty-stricken Appalachia. Now, not a lot of difference, but just enough to let you know that we serve right here in Tennessee some of the lowest income poverty-stricken areas of the nation. There's only one town in all of Hancock County. It's a very low populated county. So that makes that town very difficult to find a business in. Now, we were in a building in the downtown area of Sneedville, and we weren't doing well. And as a result of prayer, we got some folks in that were able to to do the business better, and we outgrew that building. We grew into a second building, but now we outgrew that building, and we needed a bigger building, and we started looking for buildings, and we couldn't find anything. I mean, we looked. We thought about building. We looked at property. We had gone before the Board of Commissioners, and we had talked to them about buying a piece of property that the county owned. We were looking, and just nothing panned out and no matter what we did, we couldn't afford it. <laughs> so I had a friend over there. He's a, a gentleman that was a manager of DHS. He knew the families in the county. He had grown up with them. He knew who they were. And he knew the folks that we needed to help the most. And he was such an inspiration to me. We were best friends together. So his name was Ike Gibson. And I and me began to talk and we began to explore all of the possibilities and all of these buildings we looked at together. And then we'd sit down and we'd pray and we'd try to discern what God wanted. <laughs> oh, some of those times and discussions that we had. I loved my friend Ike Gibson. So we didn't think there was any hope or any possibility. And just behind us on the back street, right beside the grocery store and beside the farmer's co-op, in a farm community, that's always a great location. We were would be sandwiched in the middle of good uh, business, and there was a building that was going to be for sale. So we started checking on the building. Oh my goodness, $75,000 more than we figured that it was possible for us to be able to pay and come out on. So what did we do? We started praying. We prayed together. We would pray separately. We decided that we would not tell anybody how much we could afford. We were just going to talk to God about that. And we were going to just see what God was going to do. Maybe somebody give us enough money to make the difference up. We didn't know what was going to take place. So anyway, we began this process. We would go to the owner of the of the store and, and talk to him. And, and every time it seems like we talked to him, it seemed like we had favor with him and he would come down just a little bit on the price and then down just a little bit on the price. We never tried to get him to. We just said, please, if if you haven't sold it by the time we come back, you know, think of us. If somebody else approaches you, let us know and let us know first. But we had this price. Not We weren't trying to take advantage. This was just all we could pay, we figured, and come out on it and not lose it. And of course, nobody wants to lose a business. I'd done that earlier in my life before. So we were really concerned about this. So we had gone down and down. And I remember going and talking to this gentleman right before Christmas, Ike and I did. We sat with him and, and he says, you know, I'll let you have it for uh, just what I've got in it. And he told us the price. We'd never heard that before, what he had in it. And he told us, and that was, that was quite a bit more, $25,000 more than what we could afford. We just decided to give up at that point. We decided maybe God doesn't want us to have that building. Maybe there's something else, but we just gave up. And, you know, after Christmas, we do Christmas activities in our county, and you're going from the time you get up in the morning to the time you go to bed. And at the first of the year, I usually go on a fast. For 40 years, I've done 40-day fast. And I didn't mean for this to coincide with anything. It's just I try to get closer to God. I try to get God's vision for what we're going to do as a ministry for the coming year and things like that. But this year was one of those years I went on a 40-day fast. And I can take you 
to a location just five feet from where I'm sitting right now. And I was walking through the door of our building ministry center in Rogersville. And the owner of the building met me at the door. And you know what he said? He said, God's been talking to me. I had a really good year in real estate. And God's been speaking to me. And I need to give you this building if you're willing to take it for this price. Friends, that was exactly to the penny the price that God told us that we were able to pay. Wow, did we rejoice. We were able to get that building. God allowed us to do so much better in that building than in the previous building that we were in. We were able to get a grant to help us on the price of the building and ended up that we were able to pay that building completely off in seven years. And we've served hundreds of thousands of people out of that building with food and we've done distributions and, and all kinds of other kinds of ministry uh, things that happened in that building. So I want to let you know that power, that prayer is powerful. Fasting even superabounds that prayer that goes forth. God is in charge of all of it. But when you pray and when you fast, many times God comes and gives us answers that we didn't even expect. So friends, thank you for letting me share in your home today. God bless you and you have a great day.